Last time on Square Roots, Yuna summons some stage presence, Riku rocks out, and also, pain. Meanwhile, LeBlanc hunts for old home movies to sell for high profits, and everybody learns the value of dressing for the job they want. What can I do for you? Hey everyone, and welcome to Square Roots, the classic RPG podcast. My name is Jim Banks. I am joined by Matthew Van Zandt. Hey buddy, I've been thinking about workshopping some new, like, you know, ways to say hello here at the top of the episode, and I thought now would be a good time to try that out. So, give me just like on a 1 to 10 scale, what do you think of this one? What's up, cum sluts? Mm, is 10 the best? Yeah, 10 would be. That's a f- that's a. Th- Three and a half. Mm, all right, mm, it's That's generous. <laughs> I put it at like a, you know, I, I'd also do a half, but I'd put it at a two point five. Um, I liked the what's up. Hmm. I felt like then it went downhill, but not as far as it could have gone. Um, you know, you you managed to avoid bigotry or uh, racism, so that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know what. Maybe it is a three. Maybe I'm being too harsh. That's good. That's nice. Actually, that question was just for Jim. Vanessa, you're not here yet. Oh, sorry. Oh. So Bye. we'll just, we'll, I'll come up with something for next week and we'll, we'll try again then. <laughs> uh, also joined by John Nuge Brandon. <laughs> I can't hear you. What can I do for you? And Vanessa. I'm Vanessa. Hello for the first time tonight. <laughs> And this is a podcast where we play and talk about your favorite classic RPGs, one chonker at a time. So it's just a final. It's just a podcast about Final Fantasy Tactics. Yes. No. <laughs> uh, so I was altering the uh, Google Doc, so I didn't get to actually hear Vanessa's uh, intro. So I apologize for the lack of response and laughter. I'm sure it was grand. Oh, I thank also- you. I also got distracted by something and uh, didn't actually hear what you said. So I also want to apologize for the lack of Can laughter. you run through it again oh, so we can cut you. in this this response? Uh, I cannot, but if you want to just do a raw laugh right now, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great, Vanessa. A, a classic. Another classic. Ah, oh, thanks, boys. Clies. I tried to say guys and boys at the same time, and it came out as <laughs> Clies. Bye, you guys. Boys. Boys. <laughs> Is that Elon Musk's kid's name? You know, I don't know how been, you pronounce that, dude. Yeah, there have been court cases that have overturned a parent's name choice. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, I thought you couldn't legally name your kid a digit. Yeah, somebody get that kid a lawyer. Mm hmm. <laughs> there is uh, a pr- in in Quebec you actually can't name your child something ridiculous it has to have like a cultural uh history like you know in your culture it doesn't have to be a a franco american thing it it just has to be uh uh somewhat defensible as a name so you can't name because like there's a big court case where a parent wanted to name their child spatule which means spatula and it was it was shot down oh wow what i agree with that fuck your stupid fucking names you do not own your child and you do not get to saddle them with bullshit names that are going to make their life more difficult fuck your parental rights you douchebags you know what my name's fucking jim and if I got the chance to be named something cool like Spatula, I think I'd like to be able to make that choice. Yeah. I'd be I mean, okay do you think Starbase. you would be the same person that you are today if you actually were named Spatula your whole life? Or do you <laughs> think you'd be a fucking weirdo? <laughs> <laughs> people people could call me Spat. <laughs> It'd be super cool. Well, uh, spoilers, Jim. You do have the opportunity now to be named Spatula. That's true. Why is that a spoiler? That's true. <laughs> 
<laughs> Eventually, he'd find out about name changes at courthouses by himself, and yeah, I just jumped the gun there. Sorry. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll we'll get an email three days after this releases with somebody telling us where we can all get name changes. The courthouse, your lo- your local courthouse. It's not difficult. <laughs> Oh, what else do we do here? Uh, Should I name we... my next cat Kathy Van Zant? I would love that. <laughs> um, yes, but you have to call it Van. Okay. Uh, no, name him Meowthew. Ooh, Meowthew. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing that we do here is talk about the game that we're currently playing, and the game that we're currently playing is Final Fantasy X Part Two, and this is what episode two. Yep. It is. It is. Uh, it's not Final Fantasy X Part Two. It's Final Fantasy X Two. Okay. I mean, you can say it how you want. I like to call it Final Fantasy X Part D. When you say Part Two, it makes it sound like it's a continuation of the, like a direct continuation of the plot from the first game, which it is not. It 100 percent is a direct. It's a direct sequel. I guess. I guess I do see the nuance in what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> now that I think about it, and it makes uh, it I would sound like, like the you last to go one. Yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, we also, you know what, we do a little thing called John's Bullshit Minigame Corner. Yep. What? <laughs> John, <laughs> what are you know. squarely against? <laughs> well, thanks for listening to this episode of the Square Roots Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we like to level up, don't we? Do we? Don't we? Did we do. you talk about what we as a podcast do? I did. I said it. Yes, I did, he did. say it. Yes, God, it's he gonna did. Be one of those and episodes. that said, you remarked on it. That said, Final Fantasy Tactics. Then, and I said no. Yeah. Oh. Well, he said it's your favorite classic RPG, which is Final Fantasy Tactics. I'm the I was your talking he to the was audience. referring to, right? <gasps> How dare! I also think it was plural, not just RPG, but RPGs. I mean, either way. <laughs> <laughs> RPG. All right, fine. Let's level up. Vanessa! Yeah. How did uh, you level up? Well, let me tell you. My saga of watching things continues. Ooh. <laughs> uh, things I have watched this week include the taking of Pelham 123, the original, which I awesome. had never seen. Uh, yeah, it was good. Give me it a had... big a review. I've never seen it Is either, that... and I love those classic movies. Okay. Uh, it was <laughs> good. It was sort of a smaller scale film than I had imagined. Um, it What's that really, mean? Uh, just like it didn't have the sort of big set pieces that you might expect from a mm-hmm. contemporary action thriller heist type film. Mm-hmm. I have a question um, about it. Yes. Did anyone say, lick my bunghole, motherfucker, like John Travolta does in the remake? Uh, they did not. Shockingly oh, enough, uh, there was some salty language uh, and uh, some language that we would consider outdated now mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it is filmed in the 1970s. Now, who uh, was even in this at one? that point, it was outdated. Walter Matthau. Hmm. Who's he? Uh, he's the grumpy old man. Oh. Was he young and handsome? He was. Well, he's always kind of looked the same. He like he's has. one of those he's actors always been who like has a seventy year old man. Same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's um, not. Yeah, he's probably my age in that, but looks mm-hmm. like my grandfather. Yeah. Uh, it had some humor injected into it in a sort of strange nineteen seventies ish way, like just like it suddenly took a turn to a sitcom and then went back to being a thriller movie. Mm-hmm. You know how they didn't really know how to naturally integrate humor at the time? They'll probably say that about movies made now when they watch them in the mm-hmm. future. <laughs> it does uh, have so- a Star Trek-style freeze-frame joke at the end. Oh, yeah, that's it great. Does. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, that was pretty good, actually. I did enjoy that. Um, so that was good. I watched a movie called The Little Stranger which is based off a novel by Sarah Waters, which I read. Whoa. Yeah, that's right. Whoa. I can read a book. What? Uh, it was pretty good. It had Domino Hall Gleason in it and that woman from Luther, whose name I can never remember. 
but she's also good. It's a uh, sort of a period gothic story. Uh, and it was nice. A ghost story without a whole lot of ghost. Uh, so I enjoyed that. And I watched a movie called The Scheme. That's right. This one goes out to all you het men out there. I watched The Scheme. What's it about? It's about NCAA corruption. Ooh. Yeah, it's on HBO. It focuses on this man named Christian Dawkins, who had ambitions to be a talent manager, and he got sort of drawn into um, pay-to-play mm-hmm. college football kind of stuff. And uh, it's very interesting. It uh, sort of exposes some corruption in college, or not football, basketball, and uh, really gives you a insight into that world. And it involves FBI agents who are possibly corrupt. It's all a true story. It's a documentary. And it's very good. If you are uh, all interested in fraud or scandal or basketball, I think you'll enjoy it. I would say that one of the most interesting things about this film is the culpability or lack thereof of the coaches. Uh, It really becomes pretty clear that some coaches knew a lot more than they admitted to, uh, but some of them also got away with it. Did they talk about the University of Kansas basketball coach? They did. (laughs) Who was most certainly incredibly guilty and they Mm -hmm. did pretty much nothing. Yeah. Yeah. They showed his uh, his little speech that he read to the press yep. and everything. <laughs> and the university did nothing. No. Yeah. Well, and, for uh, some of these schools, the staff is so important to the, to the school, to how much they're going to earn. that In that I mean, area, too, like, look at, the, like, a, like a famous basketball or football coach, like they, they're like the king of the region. It's like what's it uh, was Paterno the child molester or was it Sandusky that was the child molester? No, Sandusky. Yeah, uh, you know he got away with that shit for like twenty fucking years, and everybody knew about it, and it was very clear that everybody knew about it, and nothing happened, and then he died. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, in this case, uh, the guy that the film focuses on. And he narrates it. Like, he tells his whole story, essentially. But he's very young. He's, like, in his 20s, I think. Mm -hmm. And sort of became, I would say, the fall guy. Not that he was innocent. He was definitely doing some stuff. But they chose to make a case against him instead of against some of these uh, higher-profile coaches. Yeah, he was the patsy. It's a real miscarriage of justice that happened in plain sight for everybody to see. What a big shocker that the, you know, whole country's goddamn corrupt. (laughs) I will say, however, that I do agree that uh, these college athletes should be paid. Yeah. Yeah, I said it. What is that called again? That sounds interesting. I'd like to check that out. It's called The Scheme, and it's available on HBO On Demand. HBO. So it's like a documentary. That's great. I can love McMillions, so. Yeah, it's similar (laughs) to that, uh, but about sports, sports ball. So, Vanessa? Oh, yeah. Now I pass it on. I get to choose. Uh, You know what? I'm going to choose Matt. Matt, how did you level up? Uh, Jim, do you want to level up together? (laughs) Sure. Yeah. You can start. Okay. Matthew and I watched a movie called Extraction. Hey, guess what? What? Hmm. I watched a movie called Extraction. Did you guys like it? No. I loved oh, it. Why not? Uh, I thought it was boring. Yeah. Whoa. It's I a like bit it. of a like a John Wick, and it does have like a real slow middle. Uh, after this like crazy amazing set piece that it does, where it just kind of <laughs> yeah, it slows down, which is fine, but it slows down for like thirty minutes, and I was like, let's get fucking going, guys. <laughs> let's change location six times, and nothing happened. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there but, for sure was money on display. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I read a little bit about it. It's based on a comic book written by Joe Russo. I think Joe, one of the Russos. Uh, though I looked at that, and it looked like I'd never heard of it, and it looked like it was like a – not really a comic book, like a trade paperback, small print type thing maybe. 
or indie print, I mean, uh, type of, you know, backdoor into a movie thing that they do sometimes. Oh, we should yeah, make this yeah. comic book into a movie. I happen to write it. <laughs> yeah, he probably put that in the writer for like his Disney <laughs> thing. Be like, I'll sign this deal with you, but you got to let me make this Netflix movie. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't think he made it for Netflix, but I think he made it and it got sold to Netflix. Uh, but uh, uh, it's it's I'm pretty sure it's Joe Russo, and he produces the movie. One of the stunt men that has been working with him on the Marvel movies for a decade. He was like the, the stunt movie. coordinator, right? Was he? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Um, and it is a John Wick like ish, like the raid action movie. Mm-hmm. It had good stunts. Uh, it just didn't make me care about the main character at all. I so I sent Matthew a review of this movie that I really enjoyed like an hour ago. And I agree with the reviewer in it who says that the Indian Special Forces guy should have been the hero of the movie because he's the best. 100%. That guy yeah. was amazing. Yeah, he was incredible. Uh, the movie has a big, like, 30-minute, um, what's it called? Tracking shot action scene. That, like, Birdman-style fake tracking shot where, like, the yeah. camera flips around and you know that some CGI happened there and mm-hmm. <laughs> really this is a new shot. Or, like, someone gets on. a little too close to the camera and then backs up and yeah. that's probably a cut to uh-huh. over some walls. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely it goes on for legitimately, like, 30 minutes and it is a pretty fucking wild ride and was the best part of the movie, yeah. uh, in my opinion. The de- – listen, I'm just going to say it. I said it about Godzilla. I don't need your goddamn dead kid backstories in any of these fucking action movies. Stop it. It's this so This one had a pretty lazy. egregious one. It's so <laughs> goddamn creatively bankrupt. Whoop, well, I got a dead kid, so now you care about my struggle with Godzilla or terrorists or whatever. It's so fucking obnoxious. But despite that, I thought it was fun. I had a couple of not not the comedy that I really wanted from not the action comedy that I really wanted from uh, Hemsworth. What about you, Jim? He's f- he's full on like depressed alcoholic Bruce Willis mode action hero. He's not even alcoholic. He's on OxyContin. That's crazy. Yeah, he's on, he's on pain meds and drinking, and he is suicidal. He's I don't know. It makes it, it's really not a super interesting character, but it was pretty funny watching him beat up all those kids in that alley that were trying yeah. to shoot him when he slapped him around and then uh like i said earlier saju the indian special forces character is he's like man that's he's like john wick level in 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 my book it was he he was really good and and them them playing off each other was really good and the stunts are great and the action's great and it's just under two it's like an hour and 45 so it's just a good action movie, you know? And that's fine. I didn't really need – I didn't go into it, like, looking for a deep plot. It was kind of annoyed with what I found. So <laughs> – <laughs> but I was happy with what I with what I was going into it for, which is all the over-the-top violence and crazy action. If you want to see, like, people getting kicked through walls and punched and, and killed on all manner of things, if that's your jam and you like that John, that John Wick kind of – like, you know, the camera's back a little bit, and they're doing lots of tactical shooting type stuff. If that's your jam, then you're going to dig this movie. And the character's name is Tyler Rake, and he definitely kills somebody with a rake. So At least two people with the rake. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> uh, they already have... Uh, I saw this morning that they're already working on a sequel. So, we'll see what happens Good. there. I liked it. I would watch a... I mean, Tyler Rake's a terrible name, but I would watch a few of these. You know, I watched the Bourne movies. I guess I'm the market for that. Give me the not great plot, but great action movies, and I'll watch them. If that Indian Special Forces guy... I wish I could remember the actor's name. I guess uh-huh. I'm just looking up. But uh, he, he's been doing a lot of, like... Bollywood work, but that dude needs more action roles. Um, hold on one sec. Let me get his name just to have it out there. It is... His name is Randeep Huda, and his hair is amazing, and he's an amazing actor. Yeah, I liked that it was kind of the raid. It was kind of the raid, but instead of a building, it was a city that uh, was all closed off with bridges. But then they kind of didn't utilize that, and it kind of, you know, like I said. Yeah. 
kids get tossed off of buildings. It's pretty great. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to say too. I don't want to get all spoilery, but <laughs> the dude that tosses the kid off the building never gets any sort of comeuppance and is shown at the end just hanging out. And I was like, so wait, none of the bad guys like lost. Like they communicate via cell phone in their palaces and that's kind of it. It's weird. <laughs> that's it's life, man. I it's mean, yeah. pull the strings, but... get away with it. It's never the rich people that, that die in the battles, bud. Sam Hargrave was the name. It is Joe Russo. Anyway, well, I'll take over here. Uh, it was filmed, it looks like, in Mumbai. Oh, uh, nice. Um, um, uh, and Mumbai. And, oh, no, filming. Oh, and in, also in Thailand and Bangladesh. I was wondering if it was filmed in Bangladesh. They often Some do that. Some of the that. characters are from Bangladesh, right? In the um, movie? I'm going to go ahead and now segue into my own little bit of a level up that maybe Johnny will be interested <laughs> in talking about. Johnny, I bought Monster Boy. Monster Boy. Uh, it's fun. For those who uh, – didn't we just talk about it like a week ago on the show? For those who aren't familiar, it is uh, a new game by the – newish at this point, maybe a year old uh, – game by the creator, the original creator of the Wonder Boy series – uh, he does not have the Wonder Boy license, and yet it is very much just a Wonder Boy game. It's called Monster Boy. <laughs> I mean, uh, even... Wonder Boys is that movie about kids who are like trying to make a rocket or something, or is that October uh, Sky? That's called Rocket Boys. <laughs> Here's a this question: is Definitely I've been not. <laughs> Wonder Boy is a series that. Um, I think was mostly associated with Sega. Yes, it was published by Sega. Sega so I wonder and Weststone, if, yeah. So I wonder if if you were a Genesis house, if you were a SNES household, did you even play Wonder Boy? But I don't know. I, that, did. I don't know that either of you were SNES households. But Hold on, Vanessa, Vanessa, are you thinking of the movie October Sky? Yeah, that's it. Sorry, Wonder Boy uh, was ported to the NES as Adventure Island. Uh, which did have some sequels into into Super Nintendo. It uh, did, but that was totally... It's so fucking weird. That's what's so confusing about it. <laughs> so Wonder Boy, the original, is ported to the NES yeah. as... That was an arcade game, right? It was published by Sega? Or was it a Master System? Anyway, uh, yeah, but everybody arcade. played Adventure Island with the fucking skateboard and the snails yeah. and all that which is all shit. in what That's all in Wonder Boy as well. Uh, I played Wonder Boy in Monster World. Mm-hmm. Which I assume is Wonder Boy Two. Then, uh, that's that is on Master System as Wonder Boy Two. Yeah, I, I think played... you mean Wonder Boy Part Two. But uh, <laughs> here's where it, gets, it gets really confusing because there's two Wonder Boy Threes. There's Wonder Boy Three, the Monster Lair, and Wonder Boy oh, Three, really? the Dragon Trap, and they're both very different games, which also got ported to other systems with new names, like. Huh. The Dragon's Trap was its own TurboGrafx CD game, and then like the Monster Layer series got its own port. It gets really what? confusing. Like so they started s- spinning off into every direction, basically. Yeah, and Monst- anyway, so Monster Boy has like some links to the original game. Like it has music from Wonder Boy Three in it, mm-hmm. so they must have had the some enemies licensing. Are the enemies are a lot of those enemies are the same goddamn enemies from Wonder Boy. The mushroom, the little smiley mushrooms are from Wonder Boy. And little snaky dudes, and the pink mm-hmm. shopkeeper ends up being. But maybe that's form. just that guy's like art style, and so that's why he's but able there to just kind of do it. A, at least one track. No, there's a, more than one track from Wonder Boy Three. So there must. I know there was some yeah, like some sort licensing of take there. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, I for me, Wonder Boy in Monster World is a game that I would rent all the time as like a eight year old or whatever for my Genesis. And Daddy, I, I want to go to Blockbuster and write Wonder and Boy we for the Hastings. Genesis. And um, it was maybe, to for me, my first kind of Metroidvania, because that's what the series kind of is. Mm-hmm. It's almost a proto-Metroidvania, because it's way more limited, um, or it was. But it had RPG elements where you bought weapons and upgraded your health. That was more zelda because it was hearts. But still, you could like buy upgrades, swap out your weapons, and upgrade your weapons, and all that nonsense. Very RPG-ish. Anyway, Monster Boy is the spiritual successor that just came out this year or last year. And uh, John's been playing it as well. And you know what? It's fucking great. I mean, I played it last year. Oh. 
for a little bit, but it was too hard. How far into it did you get? John's uh, like, 2019 called. Want to find it, I'm not finding it back. that tough. Okay, I definitely got p- the snake guy. Oh, boy. So you played the, fr- you played then the first. Then I got the one level. after the snake guy. Uh, Someone- I think that's the frog. Yeah, yeah, I got up to the frog. Uh, I'm not finding it too tough. Now, these games do tend to have a real hard curve, uh, but I from, I haven't run into it yet for me, but um, I, I'm kind of expecting to because these games always have a real hard curve somewhere towards the end where it's like, now do this level perfect. Um, but anyway, I've been playing it, and it's just a delight. It's that same formula of, you know, a blue-haired kid turns into various monsters to help him puzzle his way through a bunch of interconnected areas, and it just – it's right in my wheelhouse. It's got good platforming. It's got good combat. And I've said this before. Why is it that this, like, indie game can be made to look like a beautiful fucking anime, Disney animation, like 2D animation, but all the Marios still look like fucking shitty CGI? Wow. I'm calling fucking them out. Fucking burn on Nintendo I'm out of nowhere. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. How – like, it's the same. Like, where's the – this is what I wanted video games to look like as a kid. I wanted them to look like the animation that I saw in the movie theaters, and they can now. But for some reason, all of these big um, IPs won't do it. Even look at like Sonic. Why isn't there a Sonic game that looks like this? That's all like beautiful hand drawn animation instead of like shitty 3D models with that shitty 3D fucking texture thrown over it. Look at, like, uh, Sonic 4. Does it look like hand-drawn animation? Look at uh, um, look at New Super Mario Brothers. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. It's real cool when Sonic's in 3D, because then you can go into the ramp from, like, first person. No, I'm not talking about you 3D. you go so fast. I'm not You've talking about 3D. I want it to look like, like cartoony. I'm talking dude. about 3D models. You want them? You you're talking about the like the art style. Yeah, it doesn't look CGI. It looks animated. Yes, it looks like two yeah. D hand drawn animation, like you would see in a Disney movie. Instead of looking like three D models that are just with a fixed camera, that's fixed perspective camera. You know, look at Mario. How is there not a Mario game that looks like this? Do we have a time limit sound for when a when a level up goes for thirteen minutes? Well, I mean, it was two level ups. a double level up, because I also leveled up John. (laughs) All right, well, John, how did you level up? (laughs) Uh, Well, I didn't do much. Uh, Wow. And he's walking away, folks. <laughs> John's level up is he designed a Mario game with hand drawn. <laughs> I did. It. Yeah, and Matt missed it. That's a that's yeah. ironic, is what that is. <laughs> the dark, dark irony. Uh, I have been playing more Bloodborne. I, I'm still stuck at Ron the Vacuous Spider. But really, I, why? Why are you having so much trouble with Ron? That's like the hardest boss in the game, man. No, it's not. <laughs> I don't know. I finished it. I. I beat it with Julio on his playthrough, but not on mine. You need some fire paper. Mm-hmm. Put the fire paper on your weapon mm-hmm. and make sure to kill all the spideys, the little spideys around. That's, and then that's hit what in gets the back. me a lot is the little yeah, spideys. You got to make sure to take the time to kill all the little spiders and then make sure to smack him like towards his towards the back end of his side and then when he starts to turn around then you move out of the way and then he disappears and then you do it all over again right i'll have to uh, try that more uh otherwise i watched brooklyn 99 the new season it was very short but it was fine yeah it was fine it was Uh, good right did you like it better than the last season mm, they're both fine i I felt like the last season when they switched to nbc was a little more like just kind of a little it was fine but i thought this one got a little better um i played a tiny bit of streets of rage 4 which is by the same people who did uh monster boy uh, so it's got the same kind of hand drawn art uh, it's pretty fun it looks looks really nice i think uh that's it uh <laughs> streets of rage 4 and brooklyn 99 let's go to the sphere record 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 sphere record
Where are we going? So first, before you can do that, there's oh, well, there's a couple of hot spots. One in Besaid, and then one in Xanarkand. Uh, so you might as well start in Besaid because it kind of sets some groundwork for things to come. Uh, you get to uh, go back to your island home. You find that uh, Lulu is pregnant, which we found out from the Eternal Calm. And mm-hmm. everyone calls Waka fat. He is not fat. It is the He's same so model. so fat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you go hang out with your friend Lulu for a little while until uh, Waka goes exploring and you have to go find him. And he's locked himself in a cave and you need to find codes to get that cave open. And that let's, uh, sucks. Let's flesh this out a little bit more. Here comes sure. Vanessa with the flush. Yeah, this uh, takes for fucking ever. Yeah, so they're <laughs> looking for a sphere. They have detected in their sphere detector system on their ship that there is a sphere somewhere. And uh, they set off to find it. Uh, it's on Besaid. They don't know quite where. They get there, and first uh, Yuda gets kind of admonished by everyone for running away without saying a word. Uh, Lulu sort of gets it, though. She's like, okay, that's chill. Then uh, they ask around about the sphere, and Waka gets kind of weird. He's like, uh, no, there's no sphere. Also, I'm having this baby. I don't have any memories of my parents. Uh, As you recall, my brother Chapu, who Titus was a surrogate for, died. He remembered our parents, but I don't. And then he's like, unless... And then after that, disappears into the night. Uh, so Lulu asks you to look around and find out where Waka gone. And so you ask around in the city and everyone's talking about a code. And everyone has like a little piece of information. They're like, yeah, I heard if you stand at the place that you first see, that's code number one. And I heard that the... Numbers on the beach are three and four, and or they're saying glyphs, <laughs> and the other guy's like, I heard you have to climb a tower to find a glyph. Uh, so they're just sort of all ambling on about these vague rumors they've heard. I like that they call them glyphs when they're just numbers. They're just numbers, yeah. <laughs> they're and just numbers. There is a uh, door that you come across with a keypad on it, so it's pretty clear what you need to do with these numbers. But you do have to run around and find them all. Unless you're me, I found three of them and then I uh, just entered like one through nine on the last <laughs> number and until I got the right one. Um, I didn't like this part. Also, I do want to say that I don't remember there being like a romance between Waka and Lulu in the first game. What? That was the whole thing. Was it? Yeah, they were together at the start of the game, I think. Well, I did, I I don't remember ever picking up on that. John, did you did you were you surprised to see Waka and Lulu like having a baby? I feel like their couplehood was established during ten, but but maybe maybe Vanessa's I don't right. Remember. I think so. No, I think that John. I think you're correct. I think that Lulu's kind of chasing Walker around a bit towards the end because he like needs to. So Stop being a racist. Out. Stop being a racist. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Well, I learned something today. I-, I was a little shocked about them being like married and having a baby, to be honest with you. Even though I kind of knew that, I was still kind of like, really? This seems like an odd coupling. <laughs> How's that odd couple music go again? Everywhere they go, they mm-hmm. are known mm-hmm. as the couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Waka keeps saying that Lulu is just about to have her baby, and then uh, the ladies go see her, and Riku's like, she doesn't look pregnant. And yeah, she vis- she's not visibly pregnant at all, right? Yeah, and Lulu's just like, uh, Waka's a little um, excited. He's He's a little bit ahead of schedule here. Yeah. Maybe that's why they're doing the doesn't walk a look fat thing. Are they trying to tell us like, look, we did not update these character models. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to pretend. Use your imagination. Yeah. 
in their defense, they did have to not only work on 70 different character models uh, between Payne, Lulu, and Riku uh, for each job. That's a good point. They also had to design amazing characters like Logos, Ormi, uh, LeBlanc, and Nuge. Nuge, the (laughs) all-time best character in a Final Fantasy game. Mm. Shut up, Nuge. Nuge. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <Shut> up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so, so this is really where you get the, the 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 to explore a location you're very familiar with from Final Fantasy X, except with uh, Matt mentioned this last episode, broken jump mechanics. And trying to find all these codes it's really so bad. <laughs> pushes you into those jump mechanics. It's so crazy that they were like, we already have these levels designed, so we'll just reuse them. We'll just add some new paths that you can only access if you ram your character into enough walls holding down the B button that they move up it like a fucking invisible elevator. <laughs> it's so bad. Eventually, you uh, figure out uh, where these codes are, and you punch them into the this, like phone booth to open up yep. the cave yep it's just a phone booth mm-hmm. i spent a lot of time walking around this island being really fucking annoyed until i this is what finally made me go i just i, I gotta use a guide yeah yeah this is a uh, this game i think because of the amount of missable content i mean i've already screwed up trying to get anyway anything like a 100 percent story completion because i didn't talk to that moogle uh so <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes I do think that things that the guy tells me without really realizing why I'm doing it, and then I realize that it's for 100% story completion, and I'm like, what? Why did I let that old man talk to me for literally 15 minutes? They, they, we'll get to that. That is <laughs> something. <laughs> you I watched that whole thing and got yep. nothing from it. Yep. It's And if you try to talk to him again, you get the same thing. I'm like, well, I skipped it this time. Is that going to – well, I've already screwed it up anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so you unlock this cave. Fortunately, so far, all the bon- all the new dungeons are like one screen long, which mm-hmm. is nice. Like this dungeon takes a minute to get through. You just fight a dragon. <laughs> and then you get that sphere. I liked the way this dragon looked. It looked like a big iguana. Mm-hmm. Now, was this sphere one of the that that like weird travel log sphere where the guy's talking about his travels? Mm, I don't remember. Oh, Vanessa says, "Uh, uh-uh. uh." There's a there's no talking in this sphere. It's just like a slow pan of the waterfall. On Bizaid, and then you can see like where treasure chests are, right? In That's a way that right. you can't from your normal perspective. But I still didn't know how to get them. Right. The other the other one I was thinking was the Mushroom Road Sphere. That's just someone's travel, like vacation photo. I guess these are all vacation photos. Yeah, these are all just home videos. Like they're not. They're just the only recordings that exist in the world, so they're precious. But it would be like. If the only recorded media we had was like Aunt Ethel at the Grand Canyon, like doing a slow pan of the Grand Canyon being like, oh, look, (laughs) it's so grand. Wow. How deep is it? I wonder how far you'd fall if you fell off. Uh, Don't go near the edge. Oh, wow. Well, the older those are, the the more these prime... Uh, primary historical documents become valuable, even if they were originally just home videos or like ledgers of an exchange of a hundred cattle or whatever. You can still learn a lot from them. They are very valuable. That's true. Those like 1950s home videos, those are dope. Yeah. Like little little Jimmy opening his Howdy Doody doll. Amazing. Wow! <laughs> uh, so, next uh, next you can either go directly to the next hotspot, which is Xanarkand, or you can start exploring all the locations. Now, every chapter, there's new stuff at each of these locations, pretty much, or at least new dialogue. And then there's new stuff you can do sometimes. Uh, I think every chapter, chapter four only has a couple of new things, but all the other chapters, you can kind of revisit each location to get maybe like a new mission or new dialogue or so a new. So this game is. All of Final Fantasy X, 
over and over and over again. It really reminds me of like modern JRPGs. A lot of them will do this where they're like you kind of go to the same areas over and over again, but with new missions and stuff. Mm. It, it feels like kind of modern JRPGs turned into this game. But this is one of the first ones that's really like this. It's huge, though. Unlike, I think, I, I know what you're talking about, but I think those games are kind of smaller. And yeah. This is just ginormous. So I'll talk about, like, the best things uh, that you can do. Uh, and, of course, uh, Jim, Vanessa, and Matt, if you want to interject with your own favorite things you can do in Chapter 1, uh, let me know. I want to talk about dressing up like a Moogle. Oh, yeah. I want to talk about helping the shoe puff man. Well, first, let's go to a Jose Temple, uh, because you need to get a license, a license to dig. And the man that you <laughs> need to get this from is the big blonde hunk, Gipple. Ooh. Is, is Gipple a Vanessa boyfriend? We'll have to see. Mm-hmm. It's not for me to say. What do you think about Gipple, Vanessa? Oh, yeah, I guess it is for me to say. Uh, <laughs> hang on. I actually, uh, I got to do a little Google here to refresh my memory. Gipple. Uh, oh, yeah, the pirate. Uh, he, he do have an eye patch. He do have sort of a... Uh, armor that has little uh, leather shoulder bits on it and uh, he does not have an exposed midriff which is really unusual for mm-hmm. someone in uh, this whole world I forget what we call it what are we going to call Spira. it Sparta? Spira. 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 This, is, this is Spira and he has like a giant gun sword or something yeah I think I think it's just like a blunderbuss yeah um do you think that Riku is into him? I think he, he, there's. I don't know where the game goes with this because I never finished it, but there does seem to be presenting a lot of like suitors for Riku. Yeah, um, which I guess fair. Like she's an attractive young woman. She's got a positive attitude. Who wouldn't want to be with her? I don't know about the. Cl- He's got these clown epaulets. They're like uh, alternating stripes of red and black. Mm-hmm. I find those are maybe my least favorite part of his outfit. Although his Guy Fieri hair, hair is <laughs> is also yeah, not great. Yeah, the hair isn't great. Um, the eye patch, I mean, I guess I shouldn't eye patch shame, but it's, it's a choice. You know, he has the studded leather eye patch. It's mm. a little much. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm going to take a pass on Gipple. Uh, I think that's called eye patch, but make it couture. Mm-hmm. I liked that this area had a little queue that you had to get in and, like, wait in. <laughs> yes, you did have to wait your turn to talk to Gipple <laughs> to get this license. But he, once he found out that, that Yuna herself was uh, applying for this digging job, he was very excited uh, moved her to the front of the line, gave her that pass, and then kind of hit on her a bit. Like you do. Yeah. So, the uh, next stop on our exploration of Spira is Luca. Matthew, do you want to talk about what happens at Luca? Luca is like a prequel. <laughs> it's like a flashback <laughs> where it explains all, every, all the events that... Li- no, that's not true. Where it Poorly explains the events that led up to the opening of the game because it just starts off when the ladies arrive at the concert. So it gives you, it doesn't give you any sort of like helpful context or backstory. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, Yuna is dressed as a Moogle. Well, not at first, is she? Yeah, definitely the like opening scene is. Oh, okay. And she does so squeak you, it when opens she with walks. You walking up a set of this is what's weird. It opens with you walking up a set of stairs, and there's like a fun cutscene of of you and I having a difficult time walking in her Moogle costume, uh, in her Moogle mascot costume. And then I got real confused because your friends leave you and go back down the stairs, and they leave you there, and then 
you can walk around. There's like another screen to the left, you know. Um, but mm-hmm. what you need to do is walk right back down those stairs that your friends just walked down and you just came up. It's really confusing. <laughs> it's really dumb and confusing. Mm-hmm. But, uh, there is some, some story stuff here. You, I don't, I don't, like, this is a, this is tough because you just, you hang out with Yuna while the prologue of the game is going on, basically, up until the point that she jumps into the fray. But she doesn't do anything. And there's no explanation given for why she's in a Moogle costume. Some guy runs up and is like, promote the concert, idiot, and gives you a bunch of balloons, and it makes you, like, go and give the balloons out to people. This is maybe my favorite mini game uh, of this this chunker because I mean, it, it's a bit of a mini game. It's like a puzzle where you have to find ten people to give balloons to, and every time you give the balloon to someone, uh, you know who's put up now in full mascot mode puts on the best voice. Oh, Her, oh yeah. Balloon. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the concert. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty funny. Uh, the guy that gives You're you the quest, a balloon. <laughs> the guy that gives you the quest that you need to advance out of these two screens is hidden behind a cart for some reason. Mm-hmm. Like he's crouched down behind a cart where you cannot see him. I don't know why that's the case, but there's it also two behind a window, here. and you have to open the shutter to see them. Uh huh. At the cafe. I went around and talked to everybody at first. One old lady was like, what the fuck is the High Summoner doing having a concert? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. It didn't answer any of our questions as to who has planned this concert, however. Nope. It failed to answer or how they got their hands on the sphere grid. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. We're going to do that the whole season. The garment grid mm-hmm. or anything. Uh, but it's fun. You get to play as you, you know, as a Moogle. And mm-hmm. then she runs around in, in the Moogle costume and sees all the bad guys and they all see her and I don't know. It was dumb. I, I really, I think it's a, a very charming portion of this game. This game has a lot of really charming moments. So I hope we don't seem too hard on it because I think this part was great. Uh, and then after that, it, I went to Bicanel Island, which you might remember as the desert where you get lost in, uh, in the first, in, in 10 uh-huh. and, and uh, was the home to the owl bed until home got destroyed by uh, I guess Seymour probably. And uh, it is, it is in ruins and what these people are doing is digging through the ruins to find pieces of machina uh, to rebuild robots, I guess. Everyone is super into Machina these days. Now that the church has been disbanded and Sin is no longer around, they're like, we are Machina crazy. We're going to use all the technology all at once. You know, after legalizing Machina, at first people are really worried that like youth would be really into Machina, but then you actually find out, no, it's mostly like middle-aged people and older people who now are getting into Machina that it's legal. Uh, and it hasn't changed that much on the youth front. It's just <laughs> shouldn't have been illegal in the first place, and I'm glad that it's finally legal. Well, I mean, legal in Canada and and some American pro- uh, states. Yeah, not provinces. Not under federal <laughs> law, my friend. Anyway, half of, uh, half of the states in the U.S. That's yeah, not half. <laughs> no, it's like ten it's or something. I don't know. No. Uh, and you can uh, <laughs> you can use Machina for uh, medical purposes too. So oh, a lot yeah. of people who have been suffering from particular ailments are finding Machina really helpful. Well, like like Nuge, who is uh, who has how a many missing states limb. have legalized marijuana? I hate that it doesn't read the answer to you anymore. Yeah, thirty three states. No way! Wow, that is no over way. half. That's uh, almost half. Yeah, that includes but almost that's not like <laughs> almost. Wait, does that include <laughs> like is that, seventy states of that, America? Is that, is that full on legalization or is that all? Is yeah, that, that I'm not full counting on and medical. I'm not medical counting medical. Count. I'm not counting oh, okay. decriminalization. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that you had a bunch of fucking stipulations. How many states have decriminalized marijuana? That's not going to give you a different answer. That's not the same thing as legalize. Marijuana is illegal in 11 states for adults over the age of 21 and legal for medical use in 33 states. 15 states, oh, it says 15 states have decriminalized but not legalized. That's not the same thing. Yeah. 
Wait, hold on. I think I found one. Good, a, a map. I just, a map. Told, I just said it. Oh, you did? How many? 11 states for adults <laughs> over the age of 21. Oh, 30, that's half. 33 states <laughs> for medical. I, I'm very <laughs> worried about Jim's knowledge of the number of states in the United States of America. <laughs> Jim was wrong. He didn't. He did not stipulate that it was fucking full blown legalization only. More than half the states allow for some use of mar- of marijuana at this point. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like people with medical problems, like Nuge, can use machina to help have a more comfortable and Hi. and productive existence. Anyway. Uh, so this Walker this... is definitely hitting that machina, right? Like, oh. I know he was like strict against it, but that but happens they, uh, sometimes. Often the people who are like super strict against it are the yeah. ones who end up liking it the most when it's yeah. Uh... yeah. Honestly, I don't know how Waka fucking lives with himself. Like everything he believed was proven wrong, and then he <laughs> murdered his own god. <laughs> yep, <laughs> hit him with a blitz ball. Pre- yeah, that's true. Actually, that's crazy. Yeah. He should be spiraling. <laughs> <laughs> What if you went on an adventure and at the end of it you found out that Jesus is actually real but is a vampire that is still alive and murders people? Jesus is a vampire. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> so in this uh this is another mini game we'll get into in my mini game corner, but basically you have to wait for Nahalda Naha Nahadawa to show up so that you can start digging and then there's like a robot who hits on you there that's r- a robot that hits on yeah, you. yeah there's like a flying digging companion who's like wants to have sex with yuna yeah uh. <laughs> it's great uh <laughs> next the mehen high road this is uh, buggy shit and attaches to a bunch of other stuff yeah. This was my favorite part. No, wait, oh, really? my favorite part's the moon flow. Never mind. I take oh. it back. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this is where you, you start off and you see Logos and Ormi running after something, so you get a mission. Uh, the mission's very hard to find because you have to go down these invisible stairs to get to it. And also, in the Mushroom Road section of the Mihan High Road, uh, encounters are every two seconds. So yeah, enjoy the fast. three hours. Oh, I remember that hassle in Final Fantasy X. <laughs> yeah, it's real bad. Uh, you're also given a mission to go talk to the Yevin, go to the Yevin headquarters and talk to people there. Uh, what do they say? Well, you meet. Uh, you don't meet the leader of Yevin because Nuge is real busy. Or no, not New. Is this New Yevin or is it? No, this is Youth League. Sorry, this is Youth League. Yeah, and Nuge is like, they're like, he really wants to see you, but he's busy today. Mm-hmm. Youth League sounds like the name of that like kids gang in double the the Double Dragon movie. I was getting more of a Hitler Youth vibe from it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Actually, I thought the same thing. But also, New Yevin is like, what is New Yevin? We killed Yevin, motherfucker! Like, I'm not gonna go judge well, your shitty religion. We'll talk religion. about that. That's in. I know that one's fake. I killed the <laughs> god that you worship. My own blitzball. Uh, so the only the one person you can really talk to. Uh, if, if, over at the youth league is Machen, who is the old man who used to talk to you on the, uh, the high road there. The one that's. Oh, yeah. Or in the calm lines, he'd be like, Do you want to know the history of the calm lines? <laughs> so, in order to get 100% story points, he tells you literally, like Matt was saying, and this is not an exaggeration, a 15 minute story. And you get all these prompts to interrupt him. You cannot hit – even there's one that says, I'll listen, but it skips ahead. That will not give you the full story yeah. completion there's percentage. There's one that's like, get on with it, and there's one that's like, yeah, keep talking. And even if you pick that one, it fucks you over. Yeah. <laughs> so really you have up. to just like put down the controller and listen to an old man talk for 15 minutes, which honestly is kind of rad. <laughs> I didn't hate it. Yeah, it was kind of like the Q. I kind of liked it. And also, like, I like his little, like, he explains the history of the Youth League and New Yevon and, like, how they're in conflict now. Uh, and he, he does a lot of world building exposition that I found helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's basically saying that they're both are, since Yevon was killed, people are like, well, what do we do now? And New Yevon is like, well, okay, we can take the good parts of the teachings of Yevon and kind of work with those. And this is more like the conservative movement. And then there's the youth league who wants to radically reform uh, Spira with Machina and kind of go back to the way things were in like Xanarkin era. Uh, 
and really, yeah, radical reform versus conservative uh, stay the course. Uh, that's, that's sort of how he explains it. Hang on. Question. So, <laughs> whose cat is that? So That's Porky. We know... She's, she's been in mood t- today. <laughs> she's tired of being home all the time. Yeah, she we really know, is. <laughs> we know that... We know that sin was like a dream of the faith, right? Brought about by Yevon? What was sin again? A whale. No, sin was a whale summoned by, uh, what's her name? Unaleska? Unaleska, because she was Mm. mad at her father. What? And then Uh, Yevon... Doesn't she, didn't she want to marry some dude or something? And oh, Yevon yeah. just like inhabited it because it Yevin happened to is be there. Her dad, and that's the space flea. Yeah, there was some kind of war. I think Yevon made sin to end the war, and then his daughter figured out a way to banish him temporarily. Oh, you Yevon, yeah, you Yevon made sin. Uh, he live in sin now. His daughter's like that. Suck. Uh, hate sin. I'm going to kill my fiance, and that will like she'll use his energy to temporarily banish you, Yevon, and sin. Got it. That answers well, my I, question. Thank you. For yeah, this. sin was made just... to attack the enemy people, the enemy yeah. people, the and- Albed. Yeah, I guess. And then after Sin do that, Sin's like, uh, no, I'm a whale. I'm going to freaking come back to Xanarkin and attack that now. <laughs> Unalaska! Uh, so you do get all that. And so then you can also find that hidden staircase uh, down which Logos and Army are trying to get a sphere. They say the sphere is broken and then just run away. Uh, but uh, the they sh- sh- one of them, the gun one, shoots the ground with his fucking guns, and the and they tr- the game treats it like he threw a smoke bomb, <laughs> and they just <laughs> yoink the fuck out of there, <laughs> but leave the sphere behind, and you find a door that's got like twelve holes in it. You stick the sphere in one, and it lights up. So you got to find a bunch more of these, I guess. Right, right. Uh, so that that is the first of the uh, spheres. I can't remember which one of these is like the boring travel video. Is that this one or is that another one? I don't one? think you keep this one. Okay. This one stays in the door cuz somebody shows up and runs you out of there. Right. Yeah, it's Somebody's one of the little brother or one of shit. the youth league people's like, "Oh, we don't actually allow people in here yet. Sorry." So, the next yeah. place you can go to, Vanessa. Uh-huh. Is the moon flow. This was my favorite Bean part. Valley. <laughs> no, the moon flow uh, is in Bean Valley, but only like one week out of the month. <laughs> moon flow <laughs> passes through Bean Valley, but oh god, I remember these jokes. Only yep. if you stand on your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't really talk about moon flow. Uh, it tends to make people uncomfortable. But actually, I think that we should talk about moon flow more because, like. 50% of people are down with moon flow and know all about it. And uh, it's not shameful. It's just the I mean, moon flow. Why do we flow. need to talk about it more, though? Like, Get 50% up, of the population with the doesn't have flow. to deal with it and doesn't really need to know about it. I don't tell you every time I pop a zit. First Actually, of all, I had yes, a big zit on the yeah. top of my head today. <laughs> First of all, no, I don't. I've never said anything like that. How dare you? You tell me when you pop zits. You tell me when you have irregular bowel movements. You I tell me when okay, you. That's me. <laughs> oh, to right. be fair, I'm the one who overshares that kind of thing. Yeah. I can start doing talking about that stuff if you guys want. Uh, you know what? Maybe the status quo isn't so bad after all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sometimes it's remarkable in either. Uh, volume or oh boy. size or texture and you sort of want to share that with someone but this one was ripped for her pleasure <laughs> there's no I, one time there's a uh a washroom <laughs> you know mary marysville vanessa 
Uh, nope. North of Seattle, near near Linwood. I know Linwood before before Everett. It's before Everett. Yeah, I so, know Everett. <laughs> I was in the McDonald's bathroom, and there was a poop the size of a bur- like a Chipotle burrito. Oh, oh my, my god! god. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I don't know why you got to call this specific place out. You could just say I was at a place <laughs> at one time. So anyway, we were talking about Vanessa's aunt Flo. If you're the one who who left that that thing in the McDonald's bathroom, email us or square roots podcast so at gmail dot com. That must have been that must have been something. Yeah, uh, I, uh, you, have a, you know what? You have a story to tell. Yeah, they sir. now know what childbirth feels like. <laughs> I worked at a uh, I worked at a McDonald's when I turned sixteen. Um, because it paid better than whatever the fuck I was doing at the time. Mm-hmm. And I only lasted about two weeks because it was fucking disgusting. Mm-hmm. And I don't have a high tolerance <laughs> for gross. Yeah, uh, my yeah, first yeah. day there, I had to clean the bathrooms when someone puked and filled up both the sink uh, and the urinal <laughs> and the toilet. I'm Whoa. so full of regret. <laughs> with their <laughs> mom. So Three so different <laughs> things. Tell us more about Sorry. You know, tell Sorry. us more about the moon flow because it's it's once again just a natural part of human existence. Uh, so at the moon flow, you run into some of these uh, Shupa fellas. Uh, they do have a name, their species. I forget what it is. Bugsy men. Uh, they're like Bugsy men. They're the dudes who are like Radzi Shupov. Uh, except this time they're like, oh, we work Tobli. Tobli put on show. Yeah, we're theater professionals now. Uh, Hypello. Hypello, that's what they are. Uh, there is a Hypello on your ship as well, who's the bartender. And uh, Yuna comments that nobody knows his name, which I think is real weird. Just ask him his name. Uh, so the, in, uh, their boss totally shows up. Totally is a child, I guess. I don't know. Totally I'm is not the sure size either. of a child. What if it was totally a wears a mask. Could be like a little person or like, like Final Fantasy 14. One of those little dudes from that. Yeah. Lala it's film. not <laughs> clear. Um, but Tobley's like a chill guy. I was expecting Tobley to be awful for some reason, but he's fine. Uh, he's like, hey, um, great. I, I really need some help. Some bandits have been attacking my shipments of props and scenery that I need for my show. Um, so please help me out. And, uh, Yuna sort of wants to help. And the rest of them are like, heck no, we have better things to do. We're sphere hunters. And he's like, oh, you mean like this sphere? And he uh, produces it from his sleeve. And they're all like, ooh, sphere. So they agree to help him. Uh, you have to go along this road until you find a uh, a shoe puff man. I already forgot their name again. Hi, Pello. Hi, Pello. Uh, he is with a cart and he's like, I need help. Help the hi, Pello. <laughs> And uh, you need to agree to escort his cart. And uh, occasionally during this escort, uh, thieves will run at the cart. And if they get to the cart, they will take one box of cargo and run away. So you have to run after them and chase them down to get the cargo. This is uh, this feels as broken as anything from the Bard's Tale. Like it's it that was, level yeah. of polish. It was super jank. I think there was a mission in the Bard's Tale just like this. Or maybe in <sighs> Fable. Uh, you were able in this to it like the camera would like zoom in on like the person running and then kind of pull back and you would be in the screen. And I realized that you could still move around. So you could actually just intercept them before they got to the <laughs> carts. And it was pretty fucking easy, gang. Yeah. <laughs> There's only like was... four of them. And I intercepted all of them before they touched the cart. I was like, I think yeah, I did this fine. This was easy and broken, but I kind of, I kind of liked it. Mm-hmm. It was fine. I liked that the Hypello would go, oh, no, bandage, every time the bandit was coming. <laughs> it definitely didn't overstay its welcome. I could see this being like a three-hour part of Final Fantasy X Remake with like <laughs> eight different cranes you have to move and then you have to, <laughs> yeah, to learn like, get all the cargo about. across the thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that sounds like they're really expanding the story. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you, much character development that you really yeah. didn't see. Mm. <laughs> you get back to Tobley, and the Hypel is like, Dear, help me. And uh, so he gives you a sphere, and it is the gun mage sphere. I love this sphere. I yeah, haven't this tried totally, it out much yet. I totally swapped this for Yuna's gunner. She's just my gun mage now. Because that assess thing is very necessary. Mm-hmm. It also has no. it has a blue mage ability to it, like, but I haven't got any of them. Like, I've, I don't I've, know how it works either, John. There must be a trick to it because I don't have any of the blue. I I haven't picked anything up either. It's it, really I, dumb. I looked up guides and it says it's just like the Final Fantasy VII one where you get hit by it and you gain that ability, but I haven't made it work. It's just yeah. like automatic, or do you have to choose blue right. mage first? Uh, no. No, there's no way to to choose blue mage first. You have to be, like, equipped with the blue, the gun mage dress sphere. Right. That would make sense. Yeah. I haven't had, I've left it on Yuna because the assess thing is really key. I mean, honestly, uh, not to get all super off topic here, but Final Fantasy VII Remake's assess system is definitely the best one in these games where you just use it once and it lets you assess everyone on screen. It's pretty good. Oh, is that how it works? You don't have to do individual ones? Uh, maybe that's once it's leveled up. But how, how um, do you um go back and look this, at them afterwards? Are we like, talking about go back seven and look or at ten? In seven, seven remake, you just t- uh, hit the hit the uh, ch- touchpad, and it'll because uh, I accidentally when you're in, in combat, battle, yeah, in combat, I, I accidentally if you hit the did touchpad, it once, it'll bring it up. And I didn't know it was something you could do, and I was trying to figure out how I did it again. I actually use it like a pause. It's really fucking handy when I need to just stop for a minute and think about what my next steps are going to be. It's pretty good. Okay. Um, in 10, uh, you get it, and it only does it to one of the uh, – 10, 10, 2. It ten only two. does it to one of the monsters. And so there is, in the abilities for the gun mage, there is an assess level 2, and it says will allow you to rotate – the enemies and I thought, oh sweet! So I got that as like <laughs> my first thing, and literally what it meant was it'll let you rotate the three D model in the fucking assess menu. Oh, <laughs> uh, is this like a perv thing? No, oh, they're okay. monsters. It's a perv thing? Yeah, but it's don't just... you all, you fight some humans as well? And, well, and like know. a lot of ga- Japanese games lock out rotating models because you can look up skirts and stuff. Yeah. Well, I like it. Monsters, so and like it's funny when you try to do that in uh in near Automata. Mm-hmm. She like pushes the camera back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, hey guys, can we not uh kink shame people who are into monsters? I'm still trying to get that bad dragon sponsorship. <laughs> um, no, we so, like prosthetic mm-hmm. monster genitals. Yeah, but I the, mean, we've all, who hasn't <laughs> wanted to ride the shoe puff? Mm-hmm. Uh, the gun mage also has a few other abilities that I found pretty hand- handy. I can't remember what the name of it is now, but there's blue bullets or whatever, which is your blue mage skill, which I have nothing. And then there's also something else that lets you use other skills. Yeah, that's there's the one that's the one which oh, it ups your damage against certain enemy types, and you can get right. a shitload of those. I, I oh, should have yeah. got <clears throat> because there's a mech you fight at the end of this chunker, and I didn't get the ability that lets you damage mechs. Yeah, same. Yeah. By the end of this chunker, I was mostly starting as a blue, as a uh, gun mage for Yuna to assess and then swapping her over to black mage because she can do a fuckload of damage. Right. So, uh, Moonflow. Uh, Moonflow. So, Vanessa, was that the, <laughs> was that your favorite part of the game? You said you wanted to talk, was the escort? Th- that the was escort. it. Because yep. then you do go mm-hmm. on a ride on a shoe, pr- shoe puff, or you can go on a ride on a shoe puff mm-hmm. across the moon flow again, but nothing really happens. Ride the shoe yeah. puff? I did uh, like John's no, 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 no appreciation for John's Eddie Vedder. He just <laughs> no. did a minute ago. I thought that was the uh, the host guy from Saturday Night Live. Whoa! <laughs> 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 special from guest, moon <laughs> Don Pardo. Yeah. Even flow. <laughs> Wait, what did you just say? He said "Even Flow," which so is the name not, of the Pearl Jam song he was referencing. It's not now we're mixing Steven? up. Re- now we're mixing up our riffs, guys. It's not Stephen Flow. 
Stephen Flo. Stephen Flo. <laughs> no, Matthew, it's Even Flo. Not St- <laughs> it's Adam and Even Flo, not Adam and Stephen Flo. <laughs> Jeez, Jeff. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you, next up, you can, if you want, go back to the ship or you can cross the moon flow in order to go see, uh, what, what's the town? What's the town where all the, all the Guado are from? Guado Salam. You can go to Guado Salam. Yeah. Sal- and yeah, Guado- I did go to Guado Salam because I was looking for a hot uh-huh. Guado, looking like Zoom Uh, but they are the moon flow to find a boy toy. They've actually all gone to the Macalania Forest to hide. And if you go do if you go through the Macalania Forest, which is right next to the uh, Guado Salam, you can find Trommel. Eventually, he's kind of hidden deep in the, the Macalania Forest, mm-hmm. and is in one of the. You would only know this if you've read a guide. If you talk yeah. to him four times, you can get Payne's <laughs> full throttle dress sphere, and then once more to get a short Garmin grid, garment grid to easily summon her full throttle robot form, which is, is amazing. That- Garment Grid works for anybody and is amazing if you're planning on using that in particular, I think. Yeah. Um, John, we got to stop here for a minute and I'm going to need to talk. We're going to need to talk about fucking Metal Angel or whatever it's called. This shit's Full throttle. wild. Yeah. What happens when you use. So this is a special dress sphere. You can't choose it from the menu. You have to go through each dress sphere in your garment grid and once you have used them all you can use this special dress sphere that is only usable by pain it's called full throttle Mm -hmm. what does it do well uh it wraps you in a two-winged angel mech it's like a metal (laughs) mech that's part motorcycle and like covers you like bird wings and uh, then Payne you- also turns into kind of like Colossus here. Like she turns to, she is covered in like silk chrome metal. You know, uh, Final Fantasy 13 takes quite a lot from the battle system of, of this game. And I mm-hmm. think that the summons, once you get the, you get the summons like at the end of 13 and they're all kind of like this. This is very similar to the 13 summons and it's super cool. I got a question about sure. summons. Do we think that Yuna can still summon? I Didn't all of the know. summons die? Yeah, I think that was a thing. She sacrificed them all at the all end. Right. So I don't think so. I forgot. Because that was a whole part of like the Lady Unaleska thing and mm-hmm. she had to get rid of them and send them back to the the life stream or whatever. Hey, remember the summon that was Seymour's mom? <laughs> yes. That one was so cool. Anima. I wonder if that, that, yeah. Oh, I wonder if yeah, that one comes that back. Cool. That is one of the best um, summons. Anyway, this act this uh this thing we're talking about, this special dress sphere, is similar to the summons in ten, in that the entire party runs off the field and is replaced by just the user and the the dress sphere and so it they take up the whole side basically now have any of you none of us have finished this game before right uh-uh. correct i'm already way past where i ever was i was just curious like to follow up with vanessa's question are there summons in this game can you be a summoner i don't know because like she summons sent all, all the faith at the end of the final fantasy 10 right yeah like so, so she, maybe not yeah, she so. did her sending or whatever it's called. Yeah, on like all the faith and all the Sevens. all the pyre f- or the faith. Yeah, the, the aeons. Yeah, the yeah, aeons. the aeon. But the aeons are just like faith, though, right? Sure. And she did their sending and. So got I, them. I think that answers the question. I don't think that I don't think so. I think that they've lost the ability okay. to summon, like they used to be able to do. I don't know that. If they could find one, maybe they could – an unsent one, maybe they could use it. But are there any of those left? I guess it are depends on how you play Final Fantasy X. <laughs> like in terms of combat balance, are there any downsides to using these like super powerful dress spheres? Um, I don't, that's a good question that I've wondered too. I really want to look into the de- – there's nothing that details the – like how experience and particularly how the uh, AP points or whatever they're called for your abilities – are assigned, mm-hmm. and I, I would be very curious. Like, do the other characters even get 
experience and AP points if they don't participate in the battle, if you just jump straight to pain going full throttle? There's another very important question. Have any of us done the monster recruiting and getting them as party members? Uh, so, no, that sounds like John's yeah. work, John work. Can you get them as party I'm, members? Yeah, they become battle. You can like yeah, swap can, out Pain and Riku and Lulu for monsters, or have one can, big. You can like teach them shit. I I didn't yeah. couldn't really follow what was going on. It's a hundred percent optional. Hey, uh, Johnny. Yeah. You keep calling Yuna Lulu. Oh. Oh, you you. Fucking well, I'm gonna get some letters about that blunder. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, full throttle is fucking wild, but I'm I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing what the other ones are. She turns into a weird bird, and then each wing gets its own turn, and one does like attack spells, and one does like buffs, and then your main or is it attack spells or deep? One does debuffs, one does buffs, and then your main body can attacks and has all sorts of special powers and shit and if you go and do your abilities in the menu all of these can be leveled up and there's new ones that can be unlocked just like the abilities for all the other dress spheres frankly it's a bit fucking much it's like uh it's like the weapon upgrade system in final fantasy 7 remake i like it but it's kind of a hat on a hat i don't need more goddamn upgrade systems Wait, so you can upgrade Payne's full throttle stuff? Yes, in your abilities oh, section of the menu. Oh, boy. Yep. That's what I said. <laughs> you know, she starts off with, like, an electricity attack, and you can get, like, all the elements, and you can get all these debuffs and all these buffs. It's just a lot. I personally am not finding the combat to be bad, but also not particularly enthralling. Like, I'm just trying to jam through these fucking combat encounters. Right. So another thing, oh, well, Trommel also gives some more backstory about what happened to the Guado, because basically the Guado felt real bad about uh, basically having someone who wanted to destroy the world be their leader. And so they, yeah, they feel bad about Hitler. Kind of, yeah, they, they basically retreated into the forest to try and figure out what, what they're going to do after realizing they made Hitler. Can we talk about? Yeah, but. It wasn't really their fault. First of all, Seymour was half human. Mm -hmm. So let's not go like, oh, it's Guado, you know, juice or whatever that made Seymour. No, we don't know that. Second of all, second Uh of all, all them people up in the high Yevon chamber were heckin' dead and pretending to be alive, and they were all corrupt, so whose fault is it really? Uh, yeah. Who's the real Hitler? Didn't I love the, that reveal that they're all dead. <laughs> didn't the Guado all, like, genocide the Rondo? Yes, the Rondo. Is it not the Rondo? Is it not Rondo? It's a Ronso. What, Ronso. what the fuck ever, dude? The, What's Rondo? Didn't, didn't the, I know that Seymour was the was the leader, but didn't the Guado were with him when they basically genocided the Rondo? And I was going to say the Ronso. Oh, yeah, and I was going to say, uh, John, you said that they're hiding because they're worried about the fact that they created Hitler. They're also hiding from the Ronso who want to fucking kill them. Oh, that's, that's true, too. Uh, if I had giant cat men that wanted to fucking genocide me and my people, I would hide too. I remember in Final Fantasy X, it sure seemed like they killed all the Ronso. Yes. But but uh, as we'll find out in a moment, they did not. Well, I think you, you find that out in – we found that out in Final Fantasy X as well. That like it seems like oh, okay. they kill – they talk like they killed all the Ronso, but all the Ronso are still around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're like <laughs> yeah, for they're everyone you talked to. There's like another you find like another tribe of them, and you find out that Kamari was like the run of the litter or whatever, right? Yeah, uh, you don't yeah. find another tribe. Oh, that's right. And when we have to fight, oh, his you got, brother. so I take it. Yeah. Yeah. So you go to, like, to Ronso Town. Stupid Kilmari. I did. I did. So Kilmari small. <laughs> stupid Kilmari. Yeah, he's the leader so- of the Ronso now. <laughs> So the uh, cool. other things you can find are uh, there's a weird bird man going around and you can find the rest of his band. And this seems like a real Final Fantasy IX kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, he's hanging out with Rick and Morty. <laughs> he's got – so bird oh, man's sorry, got bird like person. a drummer and then like a some kind of trumpet person. And that's you can also trumpet. find – It's not like a ska band. Know. It's kind of an accordion. Yeah. It's kind of not an accordion. It's a uh, – it's not, but it kind of looks like a uh, bagpipe. Yeah. 
Oh, so and it's like is this the same band yes. that was in ten? Remember, yes. there was like a band yes. hanging around all the time. Yes, it is totally the same band as in ten. Uh, and th- their leader is uh, Vanessa's friend, uh, Mister. What's his name again? The kid, Billy. Tombly. <laughs> yeah, Tobly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, their leader is Tobly. Uh, so you can help find the bandmates. And also, if you go, one of the branches takes you to like this Arctic section. That's where we saw, that's where we had, uh, uh, Kimari put on the, the super cool sunglasses. We talked about him, like, do it, like, riding a snowmobile. A snowmobile. Yeah. That's one of our, that's oh, yeah. forever, I think, one of our most downloaded episodes. It's called Kitty Cat Men on Snowmobiles. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it always shows up in our reporting. A lot of furries yep. came, come through and run across that one. <laughs> and they're like, what the fuck is this? So, uh, you go back there and you find that, that these Albed with machine guns are trying to kill Owaka or trying to find Owaka to kill him. You no, know, I he's not hate there. it when. Not Owaka. I hate it when people say that would make a great band name, but Albed with machine guns would make a pretty good band name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so another thing you can do is go through the uh, forest again to find Owaka and then he'll set up a store on your ship. Yep. Cool. And he, he owes mm-hmm. like a million credits to someone. And every time you <laughs> yep. buy stuff from him, it takes that total that he owes down. Apparently, I, in the guide, it said you really want to pay that off because then he charges like a gill for a potion and like two gill for a yeah. phoenix down and get some wild shit late in the game. Yeah. So I'll, I'll try my best to uh, pay that off. Uh, and then, Vanessa, did you do any of the mini games in the Calm Lands? No. So the Calm and Lands. And I'm full of regret that I didn't because I love a theme park in a game. What about two theme uh, parks? Yeah, I saw, I went to the Calm Lands and realized what it was and was like, fuck you. <laughs> well, because it's still the same size as it was in Final Fantasy X, still the same giant map. And still the same encounter rate, but there's two tents there that I think were there before. And one of them is for one amusement park troop and the, I guess like, um, uh, carnies and the one, the other one's for another set of carnies. And both of them want you to join their group and really promote their carnival all over Spira. So that's a whole thing there. Also in the calm lands is a, uh, there's a, a guy who's like, our son uh, is looking for a wife. Are you interested in marrying him? And if you say, yeah, sure. He seems great. They're like, well, actually you should probably get to know him. And I don't think he'd be a good match. So can you help find more women who'd be interested in marrying my son? So that's <laughs> another like sub quest you can do throughout this game. Aren't you excited? Can't wait. I haven't. I'm pretty excited. I haven't done any. Uh, what about chocobo racing? Can we race a chocobo in the calm land? I think that that now it's like these like tiger beast things, and it's more about betting on the races or something. But I think there is some kind of racing, but it's not chocobos. Thank goodness, because riding that chocobo was the bane of my existence. I couldn't do it. I almost got all of the special weapons, but I couldn't do it. I dodged 200 lightning balls, but I couldn't ride that stupid chocobo. Yeah, that that's that really sucked. Uh, then you can head to Bavel. And there, uh, Yuna's kind of nervous because she's like, oh, I don't like the chancellor, the new Yevon chancellor. He's kind of a skis and he really wants me to hook up with his son. And you get there, and they're like, oh, actually, uh, this guy walks out. And he's like, hey, my name's Barilai, and I'm not the Chancellor's son. I'm not anyone. No one's trying to set me up with you. I just want to say hey, because I'm now, like, I guess kind of the head of New Yevon, because the old guy retired. So uh, it's nice to meet you. By the way, aren't I, like, smolderingly handsome? Vanessa. Mm-hmm. Is he a Vanessa yes. boyfriend? One hundred percent. Why is that? Uh, because he is smolderingly handsome. He, uh, and also, unlike Gipple, he is nice and not an asshole. Yeah. Uh, he's probably going to turn out to be evil because I am uh, attracted to him. <laughs> so <laughs> that is the uh, the sort of uh, metric that we go by. Mm-hmm. He has floppy blonde hair. 
He has a headband. Uh, he has a dapper green coat and uh, green trousers. And uh, yeah, he just seems like a, a nice guy. Yeah. And uh, Barrelai was everyone's favorite character on the Gilmore Girls. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone loves Barrelai. He talks real fast. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so finally, you can go to Mount Gagazet, where Kimari is looking for two Ronso, who are like the younger Ronso who get mad at him, and they like get into a fight with him, and uh, Kimari's doing fine. You can give him advice, and you can also give advice to everyone around you, which is – so basically, the the point of this minigame is to walk into Ronso culture and then lecture them on what they should be doing. It's a real weird. You're Ronso splaining Ronso culture to all these Ronsos. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's not what she does at all. She just gives them like somebody to talk to, and all of the correct answers are just answering back to them what they said, basically. Yeah. She's just empathetic and is a good listener. Sure. And and inserting herself into their culture and telling them what to do and think. Okay. Sure. She inserts herself into their culture. I mean, they worship her. She's basically their god, but sure. She inserted herself into their culture. And that's it for the chapter one side quests. Now let's go on to this Squarely final against. Well, two hot spots. There's two hot spots. The first is so Xanarkind, uh I think I get the feeling Vanessa would like what happened here in Xanarkind. So Xanarkind has been made into a tourist trap. Tourist? Tra- I, what's the tourist. right word? Tourist, tourist, tourist trap. Tourist. Tourist sounds think- like how they would say it in fucking Texas, pal. Tourist is how you say it. Say tourist. Tourist. I've ever told you all. I bet I have, uh, I but know. I'll ask. I've ever told you all about my old girlfriend's, old ex-girlfriend's mother from New York who pronounced toilet turlet? <laughs> did she, did, That's did, did she also pronounce water? Water, water? yeah. Uh, <laughs> she also, did she also say library? Uh, my, my girlfriend's <laughs> father had moved from, the Ch- from Czechoslovakia uh, when the... Russians came in during the height of some sort of stuff um, when- and moved straight to New York. So he had a mixture of a Czechoslovakian accent and a New York accent that made him talk like Dracula. <laughs> 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 it was fucking amazing, but I could never understand that him. That sounds it was wonderful. Pretty fun. Uh, he was a nice guy. So, John, what you want to do is you want to say tour. 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 Tourist. Tour. Tourist. 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 I'm going on tour. I am a tourist. You're going on tour. No, no, I'm going you on tour. You are a tourist. Like, you know, like a You're tour. You're going on tour. A tourist is someone that goes to different cities. It's tower. And like, You're going on tower. <laughs> like sour. <laughs> I feel like this is one of those regional differences in English. I feel like it's a weird Canadian accent thing, eh? I <laughs> think it is. Uh, so, they have made the ruins of Xanarkand into a tourist trap. Mm-hmm. Or tu- tourist <laughs> trap. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> there you go. Yeah, you just gotta elongate your vowels like yeah, an American. Tourist. Right. <laughs> tourist. A tourist, tourist trap. It's wonderful. I love it. They get there and they're at that campfire that was the campfire from like the prologue. Listen to my story. Mm-hmm. And uh, everyone is just tromping all <laughs> over it. Like, ooh, wow, it's Sanderkin and Check it out. It's- this is the very spot where they had their last campfire. Amazing. That's what's the, and what's the word is, that like, everybody pissed. uses to describe everything? It's like one. Everybody says wonderful or something like that. They all use a common word. Fantastic? It, or, it might be no. fantastic. That was pretty Yeah, funny. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Because the lady keeps using it to describe the treasure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Vanessa, this I, this made me laugh. I, and it's maybe like one of the most realistic sequel to a video game things to happen. Yeah. Ever. Yes, it's so That's, good. That is true. All right. But we got to talk about this next bullet point in the notes because- we actually have a 
big announcement to make in tandem with this <laughs> section of the podcast. What happens of the story? What happens next, John? Well, uh, you meet these children that are running around saying that they're going to fight like the fiends that are inside, still inside Xanarkand. And they got little wooden swords and they're real adorable. And their names are the Kinder Guardians. And they are led by Pache, who is a kid that you met previously and who hasn't aged whatsoever. So according to Jim Banks, who seems to be like the unelected president of this podcast, this is <laughs> what we will be changing the name of this podcast to. <laughs> we are now the Kindergartens. <laughs> <laughs> Dictator for life, Jim Banks. <laughs> uh, I would like to add a counterpoint that there is a group of uh, self-identified grannies that we meet oh, later yeah. in Xanarkin who say that they're a troop of grandma sphere hunters. And they are all very sexy. <laughs> well, That's true. We'll talk about how much we all want to sleep with them when we get there. Kinder Guardians, right ladies Dude, and gentlemen. We are there. <laughs> oh, are they here? Well, yeah, because this is right when you meet. Because you meet the Kindergarten Guardians and you also meet these elderly people who are going on their, like, guided adventure uh-huh. through the Xanarkand ruins. And I, I really like how Yuna's just kind of horrified by this because this is like the resting place of tens of thousands of or like millions of Xanarkin people and is like this important moment in her life and just like this poignant thing where she had to say goodbye to her one true love and he realized that he was imaginary and all these important things in to the world and her life personally happened here. Now people are just clomping through it like, oh look at this. Oh look there's chess, there's a fire. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh our our friend, the nice summoner from Final Fantasy X is Aruz. John, what you just said reminded me, remember that Lord of the Rings game that we played? And like <laughs> we used and it had all these really weird random cutscenes and one of them triggered when you found the place where the fellowship ate breakfast in the movies. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> <Where> that <laughs> stupid fucking game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is where we had breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, the, also, so Asaru's sister, you, like, met her earlier on in the Mushroom Road, and you kept asking her about Asaru, and she'd keep, she'd keep changing the subject, because you was like, oh, so how's Asaru doing? She's like, yeah, anyway, so the Youth League is really important. So she she's real not happy with him because he has teamed up with Sid to run this place. To run. Yeah, it's pretty great and pretty accurate. It's like Sid's niece gets famous and he's like, how can I cash in on this? Oh, well, she told me all about what happened in Xanarkin because my daughter was there, too. So I have the inside scoop. So I'm just going to run tours. And Isaru was uh, was on the summoning trail too, so he knows all about it. Mm. And uh, my favorite part here is so you make your way through the Cloister of Trials, which was like again a big dramatic moment in these games, and it's just full of idiots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're just w- standing around, and uh, people have set up like there's a treasure hunt mm-hmm. kind of thing. But it's just a game. Yeah. And you run into the kindergartens at one point who have opened a treasure chest and they tell you that they paid like a hundred gill for a clue. I want to say and they're fabulous, like fabulous, right? She said the fabulous treasure. I think treasure. Fabulous, fabulous treasure. Yeah. Yeah. And the kindergartens are like, look, three potions. Amazing. They got totally ripped off. As you go through there, the uh, you also see like some real New York character actors making their way through. We're like, yeah, our boss has hired us to be here, and we're looking out for any guardians. It could be a problem. Oh no, it's Yuna. Yoinks. Yeah, these are the same goons that we keep running into. The backup dancers from uh, what's her name's show. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're part of the LeBlanc Syndicate, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you get through the Cloister Trials, and then, uh, Vanessa, why don't you talk about how the 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 evil spirit you meet at the end. I loved this so much. 
So you get to the place where you're suddenly in outer space. We all remember from Final Fantasy X, mm-hmm. when you just like go up the staircase and then you're in outer space. <laughs> it's where we met Lady Unaleska, where our whole world fell apart. Uh, we show up there and then we hear an ominous voice going, More ha ha, you have made it this far. But tell me, what is the secret password? Uh, and they they say the secret password, which they have put together from overhearing fragments of it. It is it's monkey. monkey. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, then the voice says, well, okay, you answered that, but answer this riddle. And uh, continues to... Uh, throw questions at you until uh, Yuna goes, um, is Zaru? Is that you? And uh, up comes Zaru looking sheepish, and he's like, it's me. (laughs) He was just hiding behind a rock, making an ominous voice as part of the tour. (laughs) I love this. I think this game's got a sense of humor that really works, because a lot of times JRPGs try for sense of humor stuff, and they aren't funny. But I, yeah. I'm enjoying a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And I really like, I know we've said it, but I want to emphasize how much I love that they have turned these things into tourist destinations. Mm-hmm. Because so many times, if you fire up a sequel to an RPG, it's like, oh, I heard a rumor that a group of kids beat so-and-so, but that can't be true. you know. But they actually know exactly what happened. And they are all about exploiting it. Mm-hmm. But Azaru's pretty sweet. He explains, you know, I know it's really cheesy what I'm doing, but being a summoner was my life, and being here now makes me feel like I'm a part of Xanarkand. It was so important to me. Like, that was his whole focus. He was one of these people who had decided, I will sacrifice my life to save the world, and he couldn't cut it, but uh, he, he still wants to be a part of that story. Yeah. Now, I guess there's like a nook you find, like a little little back area, some stairs maybe no one's thought to go down before, and there is an actual guardian there. An actual big bad boss. Oh yeah, this is the one that party wiped me. Um, guardian. Because I showed up at like <laughs> level eight. <laughs> right. Yeah, and this is, I think this might be as far as I got myself. No, because I did get to the, I got to the uh, the massage scene, so I must have got past this. But yeah, there's a big old, what's this, like a dragony thing? Uh, yeah, it's like a, is it a behemoth? No, the behemoths are like the enemies in the area, which is weird. Yeah. Who's like a big lizard? Yeah. So you fight that thing, you get the sphere. The sphere is kind of broken. Uh was this was this the boring sphere? I think this was the boring sphere. I was just like, yeah, here's my Oh look, we're in Luca. What a wonderful time. <laughs> yeah, this is the one that's just fucking nothing. <laughs> Why do people yeah. care about these? I don't know, man. So, well, Jim, what? some of them give you crazy magic powers. Yeah. Oh, I, I, well, no, I, I really sure. like this. So, but they're, I like they don't know what kind of sphere it is. They just, yeah, they just yeah. Know it's just a fucking sphere. Oh. And some of them are home movies, and some of them are are powerful, and some of them are just pointless. It seems like some of the home movies are also super powered. I don't, I don't know what's going <laughs> <Yeah>. on here. <laughs> uh, but then you get, you I get don't back know, to Jim. The ship. Can you imagine if people were traveling the world finding fucking VHS tapes that had like ancient? Egyptian or ancient Sumerian civilization on there and just what you could glean from watching even like a 10 second clip be pretty interesting yeah yep imagine like if you found a VHS of like Alf (laughs) (laughs) you would be delighted imagine that you'd be able to sit back and have hours of laughter sounds like a great time I mean a VHS so an hour (laughs) of laughter but sounds like a great time (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, there's some talk as well uh, when Yuna first tries the dancer sphere that uh, she picks up on like the emotions of who it was recorded from. Oh, Do you remember that? No, it's kind of I a throwaway line. All. So I think that maybe what they're implying is like whoever made these, you pick up on what abilities they had. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, so when you get, you go back to the ship and there you get a message that there is an awesome sphere. 
the most awesome sphere, and it's been found in Kalika. Mm-hmm. And and New Yevon and Youth League are both really into getting this amazing, crazy, awesome sphere. This this turns out to not be what happens at all. Like this implies that, like, oh, somebody found this crazy cool sphere. Go check it out. And you get there, yeah. And it's like, oh no, New Yevon just has a sphere that they've had for a long time. <laughs> yep. And the Youth League but is going like to that. try and murder them for it. I did like that that, that uh, they weren't sure if they should get it. But they're like, well, should we get this awesome sphere? And and then you know, it's like, yeah, I do want an awesome yeah. sphere. Yuna's really <laughs> entitled, actually. Like her whole gimmick is just like, I want that. So I'm going to well, take it. You know, <laughs> celebrity does have a way of distorting what you think you are owed. By society. Like, she definitely, when she wants it, she doesn't, like, try to give you, like, an explanation for why she, like, should have it. She's just like, I want to steal it. <laughs> this sphere is awesome, and I deserve awesome things. Yeah, yes. <laughs> well, we know that Yuna is looking for Titus. Like, that is her whole impetus for doing this. So any sphere could have a hint about Titus's location. Mm-hmm. That's, that's true. That's true. And she's heard from multiple sources this sphere is awesome. Mm-hmm. Those multiple sources being and brother what's more and what's awesome buddy. than the sphere of Titus? Yeah. That <laughs> Yep. So you head to Kilika, which uh you might remember from Final Fantasy X as like the the kind of dock. It was like a wooden town that gets totally wrecked by sin and yeah. everyone dies. Isn't that your first I think big sin attack of the game where you watch him like destroy a town? When you get to Kalika, uh, you find out that there's some, some problems between New Yevon and Youth League. But before that, v- important, our two favorite characters from Final Fantasy X oh my God. show up. <laughs> Dona and Bartholo? Is that Bartholo? his name? Barth- Bartholo. Yeah. Bartholo? You'll remember Bartholo, them right? as yeah. Yeah. the dominatrix uh, summoner who wears uh-huh. half a dress. Like everybody. I mean, who and doesn't wear her- half a dress these days, right? In this That's game. true. Kids. And her uh, her submissive guardian. Uh, yeah. Kilika's pretty cool, too. So it's like two long docks with interconnecting bridges. There's lots of secrets here and mm-hmm. treasure chests. And there's a secret shop. And it yep, yeah, back looks to Donna. pretty good. And Donna. And what I was going to say, you, you can kind of explore <laughs> here. And then you do run across, I think, in the second screen, maybe, or on the second level. You run across Bartello. Bartello getting thrown mm-hmm. out of his house. Now, I immediately yeah. want to leap to Barthello's defense, but I think he's the one who's leaning conservative and Dona is leaning more progressive. Well, it's hard to tell because she looks, you try to ask her what's going on. So she throws Bartello out of the house that I assume they share. Yeah, and their argument is him going, yeah, Dona. it's really fucking annoying, actually. Dona. <laughs> and she's like, no, I told you already. Dona, I told you to get out. <laughs> like, and then he uh, he gets really upset and he runs off going, Dona. Did you see that someone in the group posted a, like, a new trading card of Dona and Barthello? Uh, with a new to trading a card? A new trading card, like from some like recent game or something. That's interesting. And... They've redesigned Barthello so that he looks like exactly like that werewolf guy from Twilight. <laughs> like Edward? No, no the uh, werewolf that's Jacob. guy. Jacob. Jesus Christ, Jacob. Vanessa. Oh, Jacob. Everybody fucking knows that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like he looks about 10 years younger and 100 pounds lighter. I don't know. They just ruined him they for no showed reason. showed up in one of those mobile Final Fantasies or something. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Uh, Dona also looks a lot young. Maybe they're just younger in that yeah. picture. Because uh, you try to talk to Dona about like what's up, and she just straight up is like, "Hey, how about you fucking mind your business?" It's pretty great, actually. I that's really not, respected I mean, someone telling you to get fucking lost. <laughs> like, just leave me alone. I mean, yeah, I, it's kind of funny to see an NPC be like, you know what? I don't have to tell you everything. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah. Well, she was always kind of in a rivalry with you. Yeah, that's true. And uh, but in the end, I think respected her. And at first, she's like, "Oh, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while." And you're just like, "How are you, Dona?" And uh, but this is clearly the wrong time. Well, for a you visit. do ask her. One of the options is to ask her as well. Like, what's up with Bart? 
Dello, and she's like, oh, how about you fuck off? Respect. Mm-hmm. All right, Vanessa, if you go check out our group chat real fast. Let's see this nude trading <laughs> card. Uh, I, there's there's fabric over. I mean, don't we looking good. Oh. Oh, hey. Yeah, he looks small. Oh, yeah. she got he does a butt look, on he, her, he, too. Look at that. Look at that thing. <laughs> oh, she does. <laughs> uh, it's in the wrong place, It though. is. That's a weird it's butt. One of those, it's like, like <laughs> on her side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she's like squatting a little. Uh, maybe, and, like, but leaning even back. so, he looks like a generic it. sitcom high school bully. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does look like he's on Riverdale. He looks like yeah. he will inevitably end up dealing meth out of the back of a fucking beat us beat up ass old car. <laughs> I'm like, you're <laughs> say something else. So I, I feel like Bartello got a real downgrade. He looks like he's going to marry yeah. a Tiger King. <laughs> but but Dona <laughs> Dona looks good. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'd like to report that I can do the donut pose, but it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that out like it looks really hard to walk in that skirt because it's got like the leather straps in the front, and it looks very restrictive. Yeah, I would hope that that's elastic. Uh, she does have no, a thong do, on, which is fully those visible. Those do appear to be belts. Yeah, I. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, Dona's hot. Was that the point of this? Were you just like, "Hey guys, check out where, where Dona. are we going with that?" I I don't know. I just love Dona and Barthello, and and seeing them again is great. And I do like that not everyone loves Yuna, which is usually like a problem with a lot of these RPGs we play. Is like everyone loves the main yeah. character, and this this woman's just kind of like, "Eh, whatever, get out of here." Well, she had a dream of being the one who would kill her boyfriend, Bartello, <laughs> to save the world. Yep. <laughs> and she didn't get to do it. Now she has to live with him. Like, it's very complicated. Do, where does Spira stand on divorce? I mean, there is no religion and there does not appear to be one government. The real problem here that we're seeing, I think, in the Final Fantasy X-2 world is that there is both a rising movement of like an authoritarian government that wants to take over and but it's uh and also a theocracy is trying to reestablish itself like an astroturf theocracy it's still just yevin come on we all know it yeah so uh neither's good and that's why yuna is going to save the world with dresses and murder we should also note there's a lady here looking for her 13 monkeys that have been oh lost. Oh, my God. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, let's let, put that little uh, little note on that and we'll move on. Uh, you finally get to uh, – you get out of Kalika and there is a big confrontation between about 10 Yevonites and 10 Youth Leaguers. And the, the Youth League is fronted by – Vanessa's new boyfriend, Nuge, who is uh, charming, a great speaker. He talks about why the Youth League needs this sphere. Yeah, Nuge will <laughs> never be a Vanessa boyfriend, so long as that ponytail dreadlock <laughs> that goes to the floor is hanging it's off his crazy. head. crazy. He's got <laughs> hair that pulls back into a series of dreadlocks which then extend into a ponytail that reaches to the floor. And not just to also the floor. Also, his name is fucking Nuge. Yeah, also, his name is Nuge. Nuge. <laughs> Nuge. So, uh, if, at this yeah, point... try crying that out in the bedroom and see how you feel about it afterwards. Yeah, I think J is just the uh, kind of a weird name. I guess Nick Cage. Uh, it's a weird thing to end like a word on. Yeah. Nuke. And all of Nick Cage's partners shout out Nick Cage <laughs> in the bedroom. <laughs> Nicholas they probably Cage. Do. I feel like they do. <laughs> <laughs> and it really reverberates with that. But you get the nice sound of a castle when you're doing that with Nick Cage. <laughs> Academy Award winner <laughs> Nicholas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> and the, just the like uh, what the acoustics of the castle that you're in are really nice, so it makes it sound a lot better. Skull or Nicholas Cage <laughs> <laughs> inside me. 
<laughs> All right. So That's what people let's scream wrap this up. Covered in his new. We get to do this forest. We get this forest dungeon again from Final Fantasy X. Except now there's like uh, Yevonites blocking the way because they're starting to fight with the youth league. Well, the important and thing- also you can find yeah the important monkeys. thing here is that you have to find thirteen monkeys which are totally invisible unless you mm-hmm. hit the A button in the right spot. You can hear them. You can though. hear them. They will chirp. Yeah. I had to find yeah. a map eventually to get them all. I couldn't. I don't know. The guide I was using seemed to keep seemed to continually mix up left and right. It was really confusing. Yeah. I I think yeah, we we did. the strategy wiki yes. one is not good no. for that. <laughs> <laughs> the, in the strategy wiki one, it jumps from like here's where the third one is. Now, once you've collected the fourth one, and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So, uh, eventually you get to the top of the stairs and you, I remember there's a boss fight in 10 here, but this time, uh, you, New Yevon thinks that you are a youth league people and sends a big robot after you called YSLS Zero. Now, this is a machina that New Yevon's sending after you. So there's that. And it's a boss fight. And there is a gun mage, like, uh, ability you can do that does super damage to mechs, but it's pretty low down the list of abilities unless you got it early on purpose. It's still not a super hard boss fight if you've been leveling up correctly. What are Yevon's principles, if not to not use Mechana? That was old Yevon. New Yevon, well, I guess we'll have to find out. I don't know where they, what they're, and there was that whole Machen thing about them, but I didn't really listen. I like that it's not time. New Yevon, it's New Yevon. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I guess we'll have to, hey, uh, listeners, if you know about wh- what New Yevon thinks about Machina, email us, squareroutspodcast at gmail.com. I mean, someone's got to be trying to bring back Sin, right? Mm-hmm. Like, Eventually, we got to find someone who that's their bag. I feel like this game doesn't go that direction. I feel like it's not going to do like the the Advent Children thing of bringing back the villain from the first game, which is great. I am all for having new villains. <laughs> so uh, you defeat the robot, and then you totally yoink at the awesome sphere and head back to the ship. Everyone, both sides are real mad at you. But this is where you're like, well, look, it's more than two sides to everything. Like, there's multiple perspectives. And my perspective is this sphere is awesome and I want it. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> <laughs> well, in that little interim movie we watched, one of the guys was like, oh, maybe Yuna's going to start her own group? I'm like, that's the deal? Mm, maybe. Maybe she will. But I, right before you leave, uh, they do assemble into a Charlie's Angels pose. And Donna's like, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, once again establishing her as the best character in Final Fantasy X 100% yeah. so that's the end of chapter one Ooh. we'll talk about what was on the awesome sphere and what happens to the awesome sphere next time Yay. on Square Roots John you got some bullshit mini games in your corner yeah, well, there's the balloon game, which is just giving balloons to people. You have to find people hidden around uh, the that one area of Luca. Uh, that, I would give that mini game uh, eight out of ten. It was easy and funny. Eight out of ten, what? Eight out of ten red balloons. <laughs> <laughs> Eighty uh, out of ninety nine red balloons. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> What's something from this game that I like? Uh, not cactuars. That's your thing. Spheres. Marcellos. <laughs> spheres. Okay. okay, yeah. Eight out of ten spheres. <laughs> the no- uh, next video game is Find the Monkeys, where you have to use sound to find 13 monkeys. Uh, this video game is okay. I would give it a five out of ten. It's not very hard. I haven't finished it because you don't get a chance to go back and give the monkeys to the lady. You just get the chance to do it. Third mini game, digging in Bicanel. Uh, basically you get, you have 40 seconds to do each, uh, di- as many dig spots as you can. There's a yellow one, which is like the major one. And then there's some side ones, but you have to get back to the ship, uh, before 40 seconds or you pass out and all your progress is lost. So it's a, it's a time management kind of mini game. 
And then uh, fourth, there's all the Calm Land mini, uh, mini games, which I didn't do, but I will try to do for next time. next time how about we do at least uh let's do all the side questy like non hot spot stuff for chapter two i don't know okay it I seems like it's fine. a straight shot how many chapters um, are in this game five. Oh, that's totally fine i think that's good yeah and chapter four doesn't have any side quest stuff so chapter four is just gonna be one episode oh easy yeah let's do side quests and let's level those spheres which one of us is going to pledge to max out every dress sphere? Jim. Excuse me? Actually, you know what? I'll take that as a yes. I am going to go ahead and say that I think Jim should do it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I got if... my finger on my nose, as Matthew taught me. <laughs> Vanessa doesn't have her camera on, so... Vanessa's <laughs> it! <laughs> She uh, hey, no, I pose the question. I am the well, questioner, not the answerer. Um, I guess I got some playing oh, to do. <laughs> yeah. Did you? Oh, what are you playing? Are you playing on Switch? No, I'm playing on PlayStation Four. Oh, right, because because that's we both got that on when we were playing it the first time. Me yeah, too. we got the bundle. Yeah. All right, squarely against. I'll go first. Okay. I want to say that uh, I am roundly for Isaru's turn as like a tourist trap huckster guy. And the way he apologizes and then quickly leaves that little platform area is really funny. Um, So I'm roundly for Isaru. What about you, Matt? What are we doing? Squarely against. Uh... Yeah, uh, I'll be ready for a couple of things. <laughs> that Moogle mascot costume that Yunu was in was fucking stupid and fun. And remember Kindergartians? That's some good stuff. Oh, yeah. Some good stuff in this game. Not the gameplay, but some good stuff in this game. <laughs> what about you, Vanessa? Mm. Uh, we have talked about the stupid jump mechanic, and of course I am squarely against that. But what I am roundly for is how sometimes when you jump off something, you jump like several jump steps down. Yeah. And so it looks like Yuna's just falling like 30 feet and then she's totally fine. That's pretty funny. Uh, John? I am squarely against the encounter rate on the Mushroom Road in the Meehan High Road area there. That sucked. There's a few areas like that. I feel like this is going to be a thing in this game. It was every three seconds, and that area gets like light and dark, and it's hard to see. Oh, and God, then, like you're bad. supposed to like find a sphere. You're supposed to find where where Lagos and Orny went, except that that it's not marked well on the map, and it's these invisible stairs. And I was getting like. Almost Zelda mad at mm-hmm. this <laughs> in that one little chunk. Otherwise, it's fine. Uh, yeah, that's it. Cool. Well, that's it for this episode of Square Roots. Do we have any emails to read this week? Uh, it's already over two hours. All it's, right. Uh, we'll save them. Um, yeah. So before we go, we'll tell you about our sweet Patreon um, and when you become a patron at the $5 level, you get access to all of our cool bonus content, our level up episodes, our, uh, instant classic episodes, um, is, uh, what else is there? You get to vote. You get to vote on stuff. Uh, every once in a while, we'll open uh, it up for our patrons. I have to go. You have to, you I'm have really to leave. sorry. Okay. I have to leave. I love you all. Sorry. Bye. Love right. you. Bye. bye. John has to go. Bye, John. Yeah, we have a great Patreon. Uh, there's all sorts of bonus apps. There's a voting uh, system that we do use pretty frequently. Twice a year for main episode games, as well as other things that we throw in there from time to time. And it's all pretty awesome. You can check it out at patreon.com slash Podcast.
Guys, I have a I have a team question. Yeah, this is this is, is band this, business. Now that John is gone, you want to talk about if we're willing to live with somebody that loves brother this much? <laughs> <laughs> is it time to kick him out of the square roots house? Should we should we have a a square roots TikTok? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, bud. If you want to run it, you go for it. We'll post videos of us doing. Square root stuff. Yeah, sounds like you're volunteering. So yes, we should, and you should set that up and, and run it immediately. <laughs> yeah, uh, I want to be done with the kids. I want a TikTok, and I think we should also start making Roblox games because that is what the kids are into. Roblox kids is the on devil. Roblox, man. Kids love Roblox. Roblox is fucking incredible, legitimately. It's like, pretty if, cool, actually. It's a broken, busted piece of shit, but like it works. It's on almost every platform, including like tablets and phones. And mm-hmm. like kids just, it's just free form exploration and games. My kids love playing like tag and they like to do things they call obbies, which are obstacle courses, mm-hmm. which are just like platforming challenges. And they're always Jaylen stupid play, hard. My daughter plays one called Flee the Facility. And it's like, it's almost like the Friday the 13th video game where one person is hunting the other players throughout this like office facility Mm -hmm. and has to catch them. There's a lot of games on there that I'm not sure if they were created in Roblox and became popular and got real games or or if they were already games that got moved into Roblox. But for example, my kids love a game called hello neighbor where you have to break into your neighbor's house into his basement to find what he's hiding there. And Mm -hmm. uh, I bought just this weekend on sale for my kids, uh, a PS4 version of that game. It's much slicker uh, and cute and fun. Kind of scary, too. I played it a bit. Like, the game starts where you, you see your neighbor drag somebody into their, like, basement. So <laughs> you're like, I gotta go find out what's going on over there. And the neighbor, like, chases you around and you have to break into his house. It's it's weird. It's fun. Yeah, so uh, uh, Patreon. Patreon. We've got... <laughs> we play... We play Roblox. We play Roblox. We have our own Roblox server. <laughs> uh, yeah, so come try our Roblox games. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're recreating Final Fantasy X-2 in Roblox. <laughs> no, we're not. No, so let, let's do an actual explanation. At $3, you get access to our bonus episodes, uh, and we read your name on the air. At the $5 tier, you get all that cool stuff, plus the ability to vote on games that we play. Um Every once in a while, we'll open up the votes for our next mainline Scoots game. And uh, what is th- is this a vote game? This is a vote game. This is Final Fantasy X-2 voted on by the patrons. So it happens. Um, well, as Jim mentioned, one of the pa- one of the benefits for a patron a patron of any tier uh, is to have their name read at the end of the show, and we're going to do that now, mm-hmm. Jim. Sure, let me go first. Uh, All Alona in the Time of Corona, Chief Hazard, Christopher Highness, Mitchell <laughs> Jarman, Highness. a slightly chubby Waka, Andrew Lineart, Grayson, Lorail of the Cl- Lorail of the Clare, Lorail of the Clare. Okay, Tavis Nickerson, Ryan Miller, David Green, Jake Dickerson, James Hostetler, Huxley Iguana, Patrick W. Bears, Ashley T. Kevin Mosser, Get Good Nuge, Nathan Poirot, Randy Pierce, Metal Gear Solid 1 in 2021, G. Bailey, Samu Mitchell, Isaac Wright, Aaron Bachman, Robert M. Pollum, Give Me Persona 4 in 2020 or Give Me Jim's Place on the Podcast, <laughs> Bree Girth, <laughs> Brian Pitt, Justin Ham, Robert T., Ross Hartley, and Tyler Petty. We'd also like to thank Ward Childress, Brady A. Berman, It's a Kawami Mario, Matt Jorgensen, Payne's secret dress sphere can be found at Hot Topic. Race Jenkins, Chris Wilder, Jonathan Smith, Matthew Newland, Matthew sounds like TJ Miller. Do I still sound like TJ Miller? Listeners, I got a new microphone thanks to the patrons. Robert J. Defendi, Sexy Grandma's Boy Toy is, Why Does John Like Brothers So Much? Devin Sloan, Stu Skeel, Alexander Jokic, Aaron Little, Andre Rivera, Captain Awesome, Justin Rash, Vanessa Actual Real Mom, Hudson Roth, Mommy. Mike Bloomberg as Shinra, Christian Go, Squall would beat Cloud in a fight, The Mighty Monarch, Cameron Showy, and Andrew. Don't come back and talk to us, we're busy. Get out of here. Scroto Baggins, <laughs> still just no, Cake Ninja, 
Kenny Sloth, Squall would beat Cloud in a food food race <laughs> on the beach, like in air geese. Cyril the Wolf, Sling Thing Ping, Ringy Dingy, Wash in the Wind, Alex Dullard, Andy Smith, Arm and Hammer, Hexagon, Joshua Bennett, Lexavario, The Phantom Scoff Laws of the Opera, Jameson, Mary Queen of Scoffs, Michael Crawford, Oh my God, what is this game? Amanda Douglas, Chris Ryan, Matthew Casterling, Adam Zimmerman, Fine, Say Everyone's Name, At Least It Annoys Matt, Rising Hopper, Stephen Paget, That One Guy, Chubby Waka is what Ron calls an excellent <laughs> night out. Oh, all right, That's Ron. Cubby Get Waka. It. Oh, sorry. He must have meant Chubby. Mm-hmm. I mean, no one's wrong. Citrus C, Jordan McNeil, Saving Sid, Sean, Joseph, Paul Bursch, Chris Penyak, Andy M, Norfood, Reddit is Harold Lauder, Florian Jonas Kramer, Sean Walsh, Ari Corpivara. Did I I do it? MB, (laughs) your pal, dang it, your pal, (laughs) so chief (laughs) panicata flamingo. George Brady, Black Lives Matter, that is 100% mm-hmm. true. Robo Vanessa's Robo Mom, DJ Athro, Stephen Crock, Vanessa's Fourth Mom, Wonder Swan, Jared Collins, Resty Kamada, To Bumpkins, Tom, Eric Garby, Andy Best, Jonathan Ellsworth, Tracy Tanoff, Gray Code, Mr. Mallard, Benjamin Avner, Golendo, John's problematic fave brother, <laughs> PJ Ends. Cloud Strife's distant cousin, Rainy Altercation, the pen was mighty indeed, and Miguel Torres. All right, everybody, Whoa. that's it for this episode of Square Roots. If you'd like to send us an email to have it read, to have read on the show, send us an email where it's Square Roots Podcast at gmail.com. Come see us at our Facebook group, the Square Roots Podcast Group for smart, cool, very attractive people, or you can tweet at us. We are at Square Roots Pod. Uh, please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks to Lacey Johnson for her awesome cover of Real Emotion. Links to the video as well as her YouTube channel are in the show notes. Big shout out. You know, sometimes Matthew doesn't listen to the new theme song until Matthew is editing. And uh, so I didn't listen to it before we listened, we recorded the last episode. Y'all, that song's fucking great. <laughs> That's pretty good. And Lacey Johnson's YouTube channel is loaded with awesome covers legitimately awesome i subscribed you should all right everybody that's it for this episode for square roots i'm jim banks i'm matthew van zant i'm john John. (laughs) and i'm vanessa bye bye Bye. i fucked up bye (laughs) (laughs) whatever john will make it work yeah, it's one, two, three, <laughs> nope. our famous sign off. What can I do for you? Um, pay to play Mm -hmm. college football kind of stuff, and uh, it's very interesting. Oh, we lost it. It sort of exposes some (laughs) corruption (laughs) in college football, basketball. Yeah, and uh, it really gives you a well, insight into that world. She's gone. I'll just and mention that uh, uh, they should just go ahead and pay NCAA athletes. It's all a true story. It's a documentary. Would not be and it's an very issue. good if you are uh, interested money that those schools in and the fraud or scandal earn off or of those players who do not get paid. I think you'll enjoy it. and disgusting. <laughs> they make, true. They make as much as the NFL, maybe more. Hello. Why don't they oh, make I more? That it's I left because the call. college. Well, even though I was bumped off the call, I continued to talk. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we figured that actually. Because I did not notice. I got to the very end of my summary <laughs> of that movie. Uh, so enjoy that. You know, this is going. To, I guess the theme of this episode is Vanessa talks, and we don't either don't hear it or don't yeah. listen. Or isn't that really the oh, theme? So of a normal yeah, episode. I <laughs> 
Oh, what? I didn't hear her, sorry. (laughs) 